Tang Wulin skillfully stacked the used bowls and plates in front of him, his insatiable appetite evident. As he did so, he casually inquired about the commotion CC was causing. ZC, however, was frustrated by Tang Wulin's nonchalant attitude towards the upcoming Sky Sea Alliance tournament. Among the group gathered, Gu Yue found herself engrossed in the intricacies of the conversation, while Xu Xiaoyan was silently amazed by the sheer amount of food Tang Wulin had consumed. She also couldn't help but wonder why ZC had remained silent on the matter. ZC then proceeded to shed light on the situation, explaining that the Federation consisted of 18 first class cities spread across five regions North, East, West, South, and the Central region. The eastern region, where East Sea City was located, boasted the highest number of first-class cities. The alliance formed by these cities was famously known as the Sky Sea Alliance. CC further explained that the purpose of the Sky Sea Alliance tournament extended beyond the mere selection of exceptional individuals. It also served as a platform for major cities to showcase their respective strengths. Consequently, the most exceptional individuals from each city would participate in this tournament, which took place every five years. Xu Xiaoyan couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by the grandeur of the upcoming tournament, set to be hosted by Shrek City, one of the most influential first-class cities. ZC confirmed her concerns, but he also revealed that Shrek Academy would not be partaking in the competition. The reason behind this decision was simple. Shrek Academy was simply too powerful. If Shrek Academy were to participate, there would be no doubt about the outcome of the competition. After all, the reputation of being the number one academy on the continent had never been challenged. Despite this, Xu Xiaoyan's spirits lifted, and she expressed her optimism regarding their chances in the tournament. In response, Zisi's face seemed to age in an instant, and he kindly advised Xu Xiaoyan against being overly naive. Tang Wulin observed a noticeable change in Zisi's demeanor, and couldn't help but inquire why he appeared so deflated, like a sagging ball. In response, Zisi explained that due to their young age, they found themselves at a significant disadvantage in the juvenile category of the competition. What's more, even in the next five years when the tournament would be held again, they would still be in a similar predicament in the youth category. The group watched in silent bewilderment as ZC bemoaned their unfortunate circumstances. However, in the next moment, ZC let out a sigh of relief, as he was confident that their age would prevent them from being selected to represent their school in the tournament. This prompted Gu Yue to rise in protest, her voice filled with determination and a hint of irritation as she questioned ZC if there was a rule stating that 10-year-olds couldn't win the competition. Furthermore, she challenged ZC by asking who would believe in him if he didn't believe in himself. With that, she stormed out of the cafeteria, leaving ZC to wonder why Gu Yue always treated him so poorly. Tang Wulin, standing behind him, couldn't help but think that Zi Si should have grown accustomed to it by now. Once Tang Wulin finished his meal, he turned to the rest of Class Zero and inquired about their plans for the joint practice scheduled for the following day. Considering Wu Zhangkong's utilization of spirit skills, it became apparent that defeating him was an insurmountable task. However, Tang Wulin sought a means to prolong their endurance in battle. In his perspective, despite their exceptional teamwork, all their combat techniques had been imparted by Wu Zhangkong. Consequently, their teacher possessed a clear understanding of their strengths and weaknesses. After a moment of profound silence, Tang Wulin's mind was finally struck with an idea. He recollected that Xu Xiaoyan's powers grew stronger during the night, and inquired if she could demonstrate this later. Xu Xiaoyan embraced the suggestion and proposed a meeting at the sports field. She released a sigh, acknowledging that she must exert herself to the fullest extent and unveil her abilities to remain in Class Zero, despite her family's desire to keep them concealed. Later that evening, Xu Xiaoyan stood before her comrades, clutching her star wheel ice staff. Nervousness coursed through her as she felt the weight of their gazes upon her. However, Tang Wulin provided encouragement, assuring her that they were all eager to witness her capabilities because they genuinely cared about her. As the others silently concurred, Xu Xiaoyan closed her eyes and focused, causing a chilling aura to envelop her. She began to recite a spirit chant, and her voice resonated with power. In a matter of moments, her eyes snapped open, and a surge of energy radiated from her being. It was a magnificent fusion of icy elemental force and the brilliance of starlight. The sudden transformation left the trio stunned their jaws dropping in awe. Tang Wu Lin was quick to notice the appearance of a six-pointed star on her ice staff, while Zisi observed a distinct change in the nature and potency of Xu Xiaoyan's spiritual power. Not only had her powers undergone a remarkable shift, but Xu Xiaoyan's entire demeanor had transformed as well. In that instant, her previous vulnerability had been replaced by an unyielding strength. Gone was the timid expression that once adorned her face, replaced now by a newfound confidence as she proudly announced her successful transition to the power of the star wheel. It was at this precise moment that the enigmatic cold god joined Class Zero on the sports field. With a hint of annoyance etched on his face, he suggested suppressing his own cultivation to a mere two spirit rings, allowing Class Zero to utilize the vacant sports field for their training exercises. While Xu Xiaoyan found herself momentarily distracted by the teacher's adorable duckling pajamas, the cold god's eyes flickered with a chilling intensity as he emitted an overwhelming aura of coldness. 
In that very moment, Class Zero realized that they could ill afford to lose focus, for they were about to face the most formidable duckling they had ever encountered. Tang Wulin swiftly signaled for everyone to prepare for the impending attack, summoning his blue silver grass defense with a commanding presence. As numerous vines of blue silver grass sprouted from his feet, Xi Xi and Gu Yue swiftly assumed their positions, while Wu Jiang Kong found himself encircled by Tang Wulin's formidable spirit skill. The teacher, filled with curiosity, inquired whether what he was witnessing was Class Zero's newly devised tactic. However, before he could receive a response, Xi Xi stealthily materialized behind him, launching an attack with his own spirit skill, the Twin Dragon Storm. Wu Jiang Kong nonchalantly glanced to the side, pondering if this was yet another instance where Xi Xi and Gu Yue employed surprise attacks. From his left, Gu Yue unleashed a relentless barrage of fireballs, her expression resolute. In anticipation of the imminent threat, the Cold God unleashed his spirit essence, the Skyfrost Sword, skillfully countering with the Frost Scar Spirit skill. As Wu Jiang Kong brandished the Skyfrost Sword, Gu Yue's fireballs unexpectedly altered their trajectory. To her astonishment, Zi Xi also appeared perplexed, his bewildered expression questioning what had just transpired. In the blink of an eye, Zi Xi let out a protest as the fireballs converged upon him midair, lighting him up like fireworks on New Year's Eve. While the Cold God remained momentarily distracted, Tang Wu Lin suddenly lunged at him from his blind spot, wielding his golden dragon claw with fierce determination. In response, Wu Jiang Kong acknowledged that the young boy had finally decided to take action. Earlier on the sports ground, Xu Xiaoyan showcased her extraordinary nocturnal ability. Intricate and mesmerizing patterns materialized at her feet, indicating the activation of a spirit skill. Zi Xi couldn't contain his excitement and pondered whether it was the power of the star wheel in action. A faint pentagram emerged on Xu Xiaoyan's expressionless face, foreshadowing the imminent release of her formidable technique, the Star Wheel Ice Chain Lock. In an unexpected turn of events, ethereal chains sprouted from the ground, ensnaring Xi Xi and catching him off guard. In that moment, he realized his body was rendered immobile, and his spirit power circulation had become sluggish. Gu Yue marveled at the skill's ability to restrict mobility, while Tang Wu Lin recognized the potential tactical advantages it offered in combat. Xu Xiaoyan explained that she could only tap into the Star Wheel's power during the night, as her spirit essence was the Star Wheel Ice Staff, a unique inheritance within her family. With her current strength, she could momentarily immobilize an opponent. She emphasized that regardless of her opponent's cultivation level, she could guarantee at least a one-second halt. Upon hearing this revelation, Gu Yue sought Tang Wu Lin's opinion. In response, Tang Wu Lin astutely noted that a single second provided ample opportunity to execute multiple strategic maneuvers. Meanwhile, Xi Xi, still struggling against his confinement, pleaded for assistance. When Xi Xi was finally released, he expressed a deep sense of relief. Sensing this, Tang Wulin inquired about the experience of being ensnared by the spirit skill. In response, Xi Xi explained his complete inability to move, as if his spirit power had been frozen, rendering it impossible to circulate. On the other hand, Xu Xiaoyan struggled to her knees, comically mimicking the posture of an elderly woman, relying on an imaginary cane for support. She too revealed her inability to move while activating her spirit skill. Despite these limitations, Tang Wulin remained undeterred and pointed out that Xu Xiaoyan's move could play a crucial role in controlling their opponents, especially with the support of her teammates. Recognizing the potential, Tang Wulin proposed the idea of convincing the Cold God to facilitate their combat test during the night, as Xu Xiaoyan's skill could only be utilized then. Naturally, Wu Zhangkong hesitated at the suggestion. However, Gu Yue managed to provoke him by suggesting that they could always take the combat exam the following day if the Cold God was afraid. This provocation struck a chord with Wu Zhengkong, and he quickly took the bait. Returning to the present in the critical moment of the attack, Tang Wulun realized that his timing was less than ideal. He understood that if his teacher retaliated, he could face severe consequences. However, the entire purpose of their strategy was to provoke their teacher into action, allowing Xu Xiaoyan to employ her star ice chain to restrain him. Unfortunately, everything seemed to go awry in an instant. As a result, Ji Xi immediately warned Tang Wulin to be cautious as their teacher had initiated a defensive maneuver. At that very moment, the Cold God erected a protective barrier, swiftly obstructing Tang Wu Lin's golden dragon claw. Although Wu Jiangkong had fallen into the trap, his foresight enabled him to anticipate it. Once he had successfully blocked Tang Wu Lin's attack, his aura surged with intensity, causing Xu Xiaoyan to realize that she could no longer restrain him. In a matter of seconds, the Cold God effortlessly broke free from the Star Wheel Ice Chain, leaving Xu Xiaoyan astonished, and Wu Jiangkong with a grave expression. Wu Jiangkong held Tang Wu Lin at the mercy of an enormous sword, suspended menacingly above the young boy's head. With a tone of disdain, he reprimanded Tang Wu Lin for his reckless pursuit of personal gain, disregarding the immense danger involved. It was clear that Tang Wu Lin's plan had failed, leaving him momentarily stunned. However, the boy's mischievous smile cast doubt on his teacher's certainty. In that instant, a chilling sensation ran down the cold god's spine, making him realize that he was still in danger. 
Amidst the ongoing battle, Gu Yue skillfully controlled a swirling mass of fire and ice elements, preparing for a final attack. It was then that the Cold God realized he had fallen into a trap within a trap. Before he could react, Gu Yue successfully executed her ice and fire twin elemental explosion, connecting her move and causing CC to become excited. Nevertheless, Captain Tang Wu Lin reminded his team not to underestimate their opponent and urged them to take cover in anticipation of his counterattack. Wu Zheng Kong, standing motionless in his scorched pajamas with a burnt hole courtesy of Gu Yue, emitted a violent aura and his expression turned menacing. His fury stemmed from the damage to his beloved duckling pajamas. The boys exclaimed in shock as their teacher unleashed his seven spirit rings. In response, Gu Yue panicked and swiftly fled the scene. In the next moment, Wu Zheng Kong released a powerful blast of ice and frost, sending Shi Xi, Tang Wu Lin, Xu Xiaoyan, and Gu Yue flying. Once the icy mist had dissipated, Wu Zheng Kong stood alone amidst the frozen surroundings. In a moment of realization, he awkwardly admitted defeat, acknowledging that he had failed to control his power to the level of his two spirit rings. After everyone had recovered, Wu Zheng Kong inquired about the battle and who had come up with the idea. Si Si and Gu Yue casually pointed at their captain, who awkwardly took credit. The esteemed cold god praised their tactics, analyzing that even though Zi Si didn't play the role of the main attacker, Gu Yue's elemental blast posed a significant challenge even for him. Zi Si humbly accepted the compliment, attributing his success to the man's teachings. Wu Zheng Kong then proceeded to commend Tang Wu Lin for his excellent strategizing, particularly in selecting the ideal time for the combat training. He further analyzed that Xu Xiaoyan's Star Wheel Ice Chain was formidable, capable of momentarily restraining someone of his cultivation. However, Wu Zheng Kong noted that it was still insufficient to bring him down completely. The Cold God admitted that he had believed Tang Wulin's Golden Dragon Claw would be the final trump card, never expecting Gu Yue to deliver the decisive blow. Wu Zheng Kong confessed that he had assumed Gu Yue would give up after her initial attack failed to reach him. However, she had cleverly concealed herself behind a wall of blue silver grass, patiently waiting for the opportune moment to strike. When Wu Zheng Kong believed he had the upper hand, he naturally let his guard down, only to be caught off guard by Gu Yue's sudden attack that resulted in a burnt hole in his pajamas. Despite his initial reluctance, the esteemed teacher praised Class Zero for their latest strategy, which effectively allowed each member to utilize their strengths to the fullest. In response, the young students were taken aback by their teacher's unexpected praise, feeling a bit flustered. However, Wu Zheng Kong was not finished yet. He loomed over them, exuding an intimidating presence, and announced that they were about to embark on the next phase of their training, during which he would elevate his cultivation base to the third ring. This revelation surprised everyone, except for Gu Yue. Despite their protests and reservations, Class Zero endured another grueling training session, which lasted until dawn. As they gathered for their morning class, they had swollen bumps on their heads, with the boys in particular sporting swollen faces. Wu Zheng Kong informed them that the previous training session had resulted in a slight increase in each student's spirit power. Furthermore, he instructed them to prepare for training that day, and informed them that starting the following day, they would be heading to Sky Sea City. The boys, Wearing disgruntled expressions, speculated whether their teacher intended for them to merely observe the matches. However, Wu Jiang Kong clarified that they would not be mere spectators, but active participants in the upcoming competition much to everyone's surprise. The students were filled with uncertainty as they contemplated their teacher's announcement about their participation in the Sky Sea Alliance competition. However, Wu Jiang Kong's stoic expression remained unchanged. He confirmed their involvement and instructed them to prepare their belongings. Additionally, he requested Tang Wulin to stay behind for a discussion. Once the others had departed, Tang Wulin found himself alone with his enigmatic instructor. Wu Zheng Kong proceeded to reveal that the Blacksmiths Association had informed him of Tang Wulin's intention to compete in the Blacksmiths Tournament. Although Tang Wulin hesitated, he admitted his desire to participate. Surprisingly, Wu Zheng Kong not only encouraged him, but also assured him that he would coordinate the schedules for both competitions to avoid any conflicts. Grateful, Tang Wulin expressed his gratitude to his teacher. Wu Zheng Kong then delved into the details of the junior team competitions, envisioning Tang Wu Lin, Shi Si, and Gu Yue as participants, with Xu Xiaoyan serving as a substitute. Their ultimate objective would be to secure the championship title. Tang Wu Lin was taken aback by this ambitious goal, considering their young age. However, Wu Zheng Kong's countenance turned serious as he explained that power and age were not necessarily correlated on the battlefield. In this realm, no one cared about another's age. He then asked the boy if he understood his words. Tang Wulin immediately perked up and replied affirmatively. Before leaving, Tang Wulin turned back and posed another question about the prize for winning the competition. At that moment, Wu Zheng Kong recalled the director's words about the prize being submitted to EC Academy. However, he dismissed the thought and explained to Tang Wulin that Class Zero had to place in the top 16 in the team competitions, or top 13 in the individual competitions, to receive bonuses. Furthermore, the higher their final ranks, the better their prizes would be. Afterward, he asked Tang Wu Lin if he wanted to register for the individual competition, to which Tang Wu Lin awkwardly confirmed. 
In response, Wu Zhengkong agreed to make the necessary arrangements, ensuring that Tang Wulin could compete without getting too tired. Tang Wulin confidently promised to participate and expressed no fear of fatigue. At that moment, Wu Zhengkong was reminded of Tang Wulin's strong desire for financial gain. Later, when Class Zero regrouped, Gu Yue expressed her intention to also participate in the individual matches. When Xia Si questioned her motives, Gu Yue retorted that she wanted to participate because Tang Wulin intended to do so. She then asked ZC to step back if he had no intention of doing the same. ZC felt excluded and expressed a desire to compete. Xu Xiaoyan timidly admitted that she would not participate, even in a nighttime match, as she believed she wouldn't stand a chance at winning. This prompted ZC to ponder whether winning the championship would earn them invitations from Shrek Academy. However, Gu Yue dismissed his thoughts, stating that even if they emerged victorious, Shrek Academy wouldn't pay them any attention. After all, the three-man team competitions held little significance. Gu Yue had heard from fellow students that Shrek Academy boasted a student population of fewer than 100, each possessing exceptional talent. With a serious demeanor, she further explained that the president of the federation visited Shrek City twice a year to meet the headmaster of Shrek Academy. This revelation surprised Tang Wulin, as he had no inkling of Shrek Academy's immense influence. Gu Yue clarified that Shrek Academy stood apart from ordinary spirit master academies, operating on an entirely different level. It was worth noting that Shrek Academy's neutral stance toward the three continents was crucial for maintaining peaceful coexistence. Without this neutrality, harmony would be impossible. Xu Xiaoyan mentioned that Shrek Academy held open student recruitment every three years. Despite receiving over a thousand eligible applicants each time, only a hundred or fewer are able to qualify for enrollment. Furthermore, less than one-tenth of those students are deemed suitable to become inner court disciples in the future. Tang Wulin also shared that he had heard Wu Zhang Kong, their teacher, was originally from Shrek Academy. He saw the upcoming tournament as an excellent opportunity for practical combat training and encouraged his team to give their best effort. The next day, accompanied by Wu Jiang Kong, Class Zero arrived at the Spirit Train Station. Just as an announcement regarding their designated train's arrival was made over the PA system, Wu Jiang Kong urged everyone to prepare for boarding. Tang Wu Lin noticed that senior students from East Sea Academy had also joined them, intending to participate in the Sky Sea Alliance tournament. He also spotted Xu Xiaoyan's older brother, Xu Xiaoyu, who naturally assumed the role of a protective elder brother. However, disappointed when Xu Xiaoyan assured him that she was capable of taking care of herself. Xu Xiaoyu was scheduled to compete in the seven-man team matches. From his conversation with his younger sister, Tang Wulin gathered that EC Academy had not performed well in the previous tournament. Just as he was lost in thought, Mu Shi interrupted him by playfully pinching his ear and exclaiming that she had finally found little Wulin. Suddenly, Mu Xi's hand was forcefully pushed away by another hand. This hand belonged to Gu Yue, who confidently confronted Mu Shi with her arms crossed, demanding an explanation for her actions. In response, Mu Xi defiantly released her spirit rings and claimed that she was merely greeting her little brother, before questioning whether Gu Yue had any objections to that. A moment later, Mu Xi glanced at Tang Wulin and acknowledged his impressive forging skills, but dismissed his chances in a contest between spirit masters. She also questioned whether Tang Wulin and Class Zero could make it past the first round considering the numerous teams participating. Furthermore, she declared that the goal for the senior students that year was to secure a spot in the top eight. In that moment, Tang Wulin stood in awe of Mu Shi's power, which had surpassed rank 30. Additionally, she had obtained her third spirit ring. Mu Shi scolded Tang Wulin for aspiring to claim first place in the competition, reminding him that he was only 10 years old and still in the early stages of development. Gu Yue retorted, emphasizing that their sole focus was on their goal and nothing else. The group from EC Academy boarded the spirit train, and Tang Wulin took a seat by the window next to ZC. However, before ZC could fully relax, Gu Yue approached him and demanded that he vacate the seat, as she wanted to sit next to Tang Wulin. ZC attempted to protest, stating that he had claimed the seat first and criticizing Gu Yue's harsh tone. However, moments later, he reluctantly rose from his seat, nursing a fresh bump on his head and wearing a somber expression. Meanwhile, Gu Yue casually settled down beside Tang Wulin. Xi Xi attempted to sit next to Xu Xiaoyan, but once again before he could get comfortable, Xu Xiaoyu appeared and insisted that Zi Xi vacate the seat so he could sit with his sister. Naturally, Zi Xi protested once more, however, in no time, he departed with a new bump on his head, feeling deeply aggrieved. Eventually, Zi Xi found a seat next to the cold god. However, he couldn't relax and began perspiring profusely, finding it incredibly stressful to sit beside his teacher. He attempted to excuse himself and find another seat, but the cold god remained indifferent. Shortly after, ZC returned and settled down with yet another fresh bump on his head, acquired from elsewhere. As the train departed from East Sea City, Tang Wulin's heart swelled with determination. He realized that the time had come to prove himself after dedicating so much effort to his cultivation and training. Throughout the journey, 
Gu Yue and Tang Wulin sat silently beside each other. As the sun ascended over the eastern horizon, Tang Wulin's mind wandered, transporting him to a time when he and Nair frolicked along the beach, hand in hand. Nair's image became so vivid in his mind that he called out to her, experiencing a familiar sensation as if she were right beside him. To his surprise, Gu Yue responded, jolting Tang Wulin back to reality, causing his eyes to well up slightly. He quickly explained that it was nothing and confessed that he missed his sister. He admitted that he had no knowledge of her whereabouts or activities, but he was certain that Nair would be delighted to learn that he had become a spirit master. Gu Yue kindly reassured him not to worry before graciously handing him a refreshing drink. Tang Wulin gratefully accepted the water bottle and took a sip, while Gu Yue observed him attentively. Afterwards, he returned the bottle to her, only to realize that he had unintentionally drunk from her personal water bottle. However, what unfolded next left him utterly speechless. Gu Yue nonchalantly took a sip from the bottle, innocently glancing at Tang Wulin. A faint blush crept onto the boy's cheeks, mingled with a hint of confusion. In that moment, Gu Yue inquired if something was amiss. In response, Tang Wulin assured her that everything was fine. As time passed, Gu Yue began to feel a slight drowsiness and requested to lean on Tang Wulin's shoulder. Caught off guard, he blushed instantly, yet he did not resist. Tang Wulin watched as Gu Yue nestled against his shoulder, gradually finding her comfort. He remained flustered, pondering why she had even bothered to seek his permission in the first place. Eventually, he too succumbed to drowsiness and drifted into a deep slumber. Before long, he found himself immersed in a vivid dream, where Nair awakened him, as she did every morning. On this particular morning, Nair brimmed with excitement, as Tang Wulin had promised to accompany her to the beach to witness the sunrise. Despite her enthusiasm, Tang Wulin requested a few more moments of sleep. Nair agreed wholeheartedly and even nestled beside him, resting her head on his shoulder. Suddenly, Tang Wulin was abruptly awakened, his voice calling out to Nair echoing through the train. Startled, Gu Yue awoke and inquired if something was amiss. Tang Wulin quickly dismissed her concern. Before long, the train arrived at Sky Sea City, and the entire East Sea Academy party disembarked. Gu Yue stretched contentedly, having enjoyed a lengthy nap, while Tang Wulin reminded her not to forget her luggage. Although he too had slept for an extended period, Tang Wulin felt a slight unease. He glanced at Gu Yue and realized that in her presence, he experienced a comforting warmth, a sensation he had only felt before when he was with Nair. Sky Sea City bore similarities to East Sea City, but its location was superior boasting the largest dock on the entire continent. It served as the base for the Federal Navy, with the distant waters revealing the faint outlines of warships. In Sky Sea City, ordinary citizens entered military service at the age of 18, remaining within the jurisdiction of the Sky Sea Alliance. Tang Wulin, being young, still had some time before reaching the required age for military service. However, as a spirit master, he possessed the choice of whether to enlist. Furthermore, his status as a level 4 blacksmith granted him a lofty social standing. From his perspective, there was little distinction between Sky Sea City and East Sea City, as both were waterfront cities adorned with towering structures. Unlike East Sea City, Sky Sea City boasted a greater number of mountains in its vicinity, with numerous tall buildings perched upon them, creating an illusion of ascending into the heavens. Tang Wulin suddenly noticed another peculiar occurrence. During his slumber on the train, he had unexpectedly broken through his cultivation bottleneck, reaching the 18th rank. It was astonishing to realize that a mere nap alongside Gu Yue had facilitated this breakthrough. The students of EC Academy arrived at their designated hotel, ready to settle in for the night. As they checked in, Gu Yue casually approached Wu Zhang Kong with a request to sleep in Tang Wu Lin's room. The boys and girls then split off in different directions, each heading towards their respective accommodations. Gu Yue, sporting a fresh bump on her head, was reminded by the cold god to gather her belongings and get some rest. Once inside the room, Tang Wu Lin couldn't help but be impressed by the elegant decor. Meanwhile, Xi Xi wasted no time in leaping onto the bed, reveling in its softness and comfort. Suddenly, a knock on the door interrupted their moment of relaxation. It was Mu Shi. Tang Wulin opened the door, only to be asked by her to accompany her somewhere. Xi Shi bid them farewell, eager to get some early rest. Mu Shi led Tang Wulin down the corridor, hand in hand, as he questioned their destination. As they turned a corner, Mu Shi took advantage of the moment to playfully pinch Tang Wulin's cheeks. He couldn't help but inquire if that was the sole reason for her visit. However, she denied it, and guided him to a room where a group of people had gathered. With a cheerful tone, she announced that everyone present had been eagerly awaiting Tang Wulin's arrival. Tang Wulin recognized the familiar face of Sen Yue among the group. Sen Yue proceeded to introduce each person in the room to Tang Wulin, explaining that they were all part of the younger generation of East Sea City's Blacksmith Association. Two individuals stood out to Tang Wulin, Zheng Tian, an impressive 18-year-old Level 3 blacksmith, and Tang Wen Hao, also a Level 3 blacksmith. Finally, Sen Yue addressed the group providing a recap of their previous tournament performance. Afterwards, Tang Wenhao was assigned by Sen Yue to participate in the adult category and strive to win as many awards as possible. 
In response, the young man silently agreed. Tang Wu Lin acknowledged him as Sen Yue's chief disciple. Following this, Sen Yue encouraged Zheng Tian to showcase his full potential, to which the latter arrogantly consented. Finally, Sen Yue turned to Mu Shi and Tang Wu Lin, expressing his confidence in their abilities. Tang Wu Lin felt a bit flustered, but Tang Wenhao encouraged him to be more self assured. On the other hand, Zheng Tian boosted Mu Shi's confidence by expressing his belief that she could emerge as the champion. At that moment, the other participants from the Blacksmith Association gathered around her, intrigued by her ambitious goal for the tournament. Each of them voiced their opinions, while Mu Shi awkwardly expressed her uncertainty. Tang Wu Lin realized that everyone present only saw him as nothing more than Mu Shi's friend. It reminded him of the caution he had received at the Blacksmith Association, warning him against drawing too much attention to himself. Later, Tian Yue briefly discussed the structure of the upcoming contest, addressing both the junior and adult categories. Sometime later, Tang Wu Lin left the meeting and made his way to the rooftop. As he pondered over Sen Yue's words, he gazed into the distance, contemplating the potential implications of winning first place. Afterwards, he returned to the hotel room he shared with ZC, only to find the latter fast asleep in an unusual position. As he gazed out of the window towards the vast expanse of the sea, a tinge of nervousness washed over him. Tang Wu Lin pondered the ambitious goal set by Mu Shi and wondered how far he could truly go. In that moment, the words of Gu Yue echoed in his mind. Their aim was to secure first place. It was then that he truly appreciated Gu Yue's unwavering determination and resolved to adopt it as his own. With a firm grip on his clenched fists, Tang Wu Lin focused his energy on quelling his nerves. After a while, he opened his eyes with newfound courage and determination to achieve a commendable outcome in the upcoming competition. Tang Wu Lin then settled himself down to meditate for the remainder of the evening to improve mental clarity as well as his spirit power. The following day arrived, and all the teams had gathered for the grand opening ceremony of the tournament. Tang Wu Lin couldn't help but marvel at the sight of the elevated combat arena. CC remarked that this was the very place where they would face their opponents, including participants from the esteemed Shrek Academy. As Tang Wu Lin scanned the crowd of participants, his attention was drawn to a plump boy who appeared to be desperately craving food. Approaching the boy, Tang Wu Lin kindly offered him some fried fish. The boy's eyes sparkled with gratitude as he eagerly devoured the delectable treat. Introducing himself as Shu, the boy expressed his heartfelt thanks to Tang Wu Lin, addressing him as a big brother. However, Tang Wu Lin humbly requested him not to do so, as he might actually be the younger one. And so, the plump boy introduced himself fully as Shu Liji, a ten-year-old with an insatiable appetite. In response, Tang Wu Lin introduced himself and inquired if Shu Liji had come to compete. Soon after, the boys took a seat and bonded over their mutual love for food. Gu Yue observed from the sidelines, curious about their interaction. CC too was puzzled and remarked that it seemed as though the two had come to the arena for a meal. With excitement, Shu Liji eagerly asked Tang Wu Lin if he would take him somewhere to eat, to which Tang Wu Lin agreed. However, their plans were interrupted by the sudden appearance of a stern-looking girl standing behind Shu Liji. She questioned his presence at the location, reminding him that the competition was about to begin. Shu Liji promptly apologized for his absence, and the stern girl instructed them to leave while cautioning against accepting food from strangers, as there could be ill-intentioned individuals nearby. Tang Wu Lin could only awkwardly scratch his head and sigh in response. Shortly after, an announcement was made, welcoming everyone to the tournament, with a special mention of the esteemed Shrek Academy in attendance. Two teams then ascended to the arena, and it was announced that the former youth champions of the Sky Sea Tournament would challenge the team from Shrek Academy. As Tang Wu Lin gazed up at the arena, a sudden realization struck him. The two individuals he had encountered earlier, dressed in green uniforms, were both from Shrek Academy. The three members of Class Zero expressed their astonishment, as the team from Shrek Academy appeared to be not much older than themselves. Xu Xiaoyan, in particular, pondered the differences between them. A moment later, the signal was given to commence the match and the team consisting of first-year students from Shrek Academy took the initiative to launch their attack. Tang Wu Lin was captivated by the spectacle unfolding before his eyes. He was astounded to witness Shu Liji even possessing a black spirit ring. Suddenly, the arena was enveloped in a dome of vibrant blue thunderbolts, and a serpent-like dragon silhouette emerged on the stage. As Tang Wu Lin pondered in speechless wonder, the surprises continued to unfold. The blue light completely obstructed his ability to perceive what was transpiring within the lightning dome, rendering his learned technique the purple demon eye from the Tang sect, useless. After approximately a minute, the blue lightning dissipated, and the match concluded. All the participants representing the Sky Sea Alliance lay defeated, and a profound silence descended upon the stadium. Meanwhile, CC couldn't help but marvel at how the Shrek Academy team managed to inflict such damage upon the stage. Tang Wulin couldn't help but think that it was only natural for students from Shrek Academy to achieve such feats, but he also found himself questioning their humanity. He was deeply impressed by their remarkable teamwork and explosive power. Xu Xiaoyan offered her analysis, but Gu Yue confidently refuted it, 
asserting that their Class Zero would become even stronger as they matured, just like the students from Shrek Academy. Suddenly, Wu Jiangkong interjected, emphasizing that surpassing the students of Shrek Academy would hold no significance. Perplexed, Class Zero pondered his cryptic statement. The enigmatic Wu Jiangkong clarified that the team representing Shrek Academy on stage consisted solely of outer court members. Without further elaboration, he redirected their attention to the prodigious young member of Shrek Academy's team, implying that this individual possessed extraordinary talents. Following this revelation, Wu Jiangkong declared that these individuals would become Class Zero's most formidable adversaries in the future. Later, in a quaint restaurant, Xu Liji gleefully devoured an entire fried fish with bowls piled high on either side. He expressed gratitude towards Tang Wulin for fulfilling his promise of treating him to a meal. When questioned about his own lack of consumption, Tang Wulin playfully responded that if he were to partake, there would be no food left for anyone else in the establishment. However, Xu Liji insisted that Tang Wulin join him in feasting and generously offered to treat him as well. Excitedly, Tang Wulin summoned the waiter to place their order. As they savored their meal, Xu Liji complimented Tang Wulin's insatiable appetite. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of the displeased girl from earlier, Ye Xinglan, who had caught Xu Liji sneaking away once again. Xu Liji attempted to appease the irate Ye Xinglan, inviting her to join them for a meal. However, she remained silent, directing her rudeness towards Tang Wulin instead. Unfazed, Tang Wulin extended an invitation for her to join their table. At that very moment, two chefs emerged from the kitchen, presenting the restaurant's piece de resistance, a gargantuan salted grilled bluefin tuna. Ye Xinglan was taken aback by the sheer size of the dish, while Xu Liji eagerly anticipated the feast. Tang Wulin, once again, extended an invitation to Ye Xinglan, inquiring if she would like to join them. Despite her cautious nature, Ye Xinglan succumbed to her appetite and decided to join the boys. Xu Liji and Tang Wulin dined without paying much attention to table manners or proper etiquette, while Ye Xinglan astutely observed Tang Wulin's astonishing capacity for food. She couldn't help but notice that he could eat even more than Xu Liji, a sight she had never witnessed before. Nevertheless, Ye Xinglan couldn't deny the delectable taste of the fish. In no time all that remained on the table were the discarded fish bones. Subsequently, Ye Xinglan demanded to know Tang Wulin's identity and the reason behind his insatiable appetite. In response, Tang Wulin simply stated that he had possessed this voracious appetite since birth. Furthermore, he commended Ye Xinglan for her exceptional performance in the previous match. This unexpected praise put Ye Xinglan on high alert. Sensing the need to depart, she promptly mentioned settling the bill. Xu Liji interjected, generously offering to foot the bill as a treat for Tang Wulin. Ye Xinglan, however, inquired if Xu Liji had brought any money, causing the plump boy to realize that he was, in fact, penniless. Tang Wulin was taken aback by the unreliability of his new acquaintance, regretting his earlier indulgence in a hearty meal. In that moment, Ye Xinglan turned towards him and inquired about the expression on Tang Wulin's face. She proudly declared that it would be an honor for him to treat them to dinner. In response, Tang Wulin rose from his seat and sarcastically agreed with Ye Xinglan's words, accompanied by a mischievous smile. Subsequently, he requested that they wait at the table while he settled the bill. Ye Xinglan scoffed at his request. As Tang Wulin left, Ye Xinglan expressed her reservations about him, suspecting that he had ulterior motives. She found it peculiar that he had taken the initiative to approach them. Xu Liji, however, expressed skepticism and urged her to wait and see. After some time, Ye Xinglan and Xu Liji left the restaurant and ventured onto the street. They wondered why Tang Wulin had not returned yet. Xu Lishi, unable to locate Tang Wulin, suspected that he had already departed. Furthermore, he believed that Tang Wulin had left without bidding them farewell due to Ye Xinglan's rudeness. In response, Ye Xinglan snorted and urged Xu Lishi to leave with her. Just as they were preparing to depart, they were intercepted by the restaurant manager who questioned their intention to settle the bill. Ye Xinglan froze in place, gloomily seeking clarification from the manager. Nervously, Xu Liji confirmed that they had indeed been asked to pay for their meal. Meanwhile, at a distance, Tang Wulin mischievously smiled as he walked away. It turned out that he had only paid for a third of the meal before leaving. Early the following morning, Tang Wulin arrived at the designated meeting place for the Blacksmiths Association's forging competition. As he approached, Mu Shi playfully pinched his cheek and reminded him to conceal his true identity as a level 4 blacksmith. This way, he would be eligible to compete in the advanced rounds and strive to secure a top 3 position in the finals. While Mu Xi spoke, Zheng Tian, a fellow participant, approached them. He inquired about Mu Xi's concerns regarding her own placement and questioned why she had brought Tang Wu Lin along. He assumed that she wanted the young boy to gain worldly experience. Furthermore, he doubted whether Tang Wu Lin, at his age, possessed the strength to wield a forging hammer. Tang Wu Lin silently pondered why Zheng Tian felt the need to belittle him in order to elevate himself. However, before he could respond audibly, Mu Xi affectionately patted his head and revealed that Tang Wu Lin was her father's direct disciple. She also questioned whether Zheng Tian intended to challenge her father's choices. 
Envy flickered in Zheng Tian's narrowed eyes, as he had believed that Mu Chen, Mu Shi's father, would favor him more. However, he now realized that Tang Wulin, the young boy before him, held the esteemed position of being the chairman's personal disciple. After a moment, Zheng Tian turned away and expressed his anticipation for Tang Wulin's performance in the junior category, despite his age. As the young man walked away, Tang Wulin pondered the reason behind his peculiar behavior, especially since he had never done anything to offend him. In that moment, he gained a deeper understanding of his teacher's overprotectiveness. It was the first time Tang Wulin had encountered the ugly nature of jealousy in the real world. The blacksmith competition took place in a different venue, where all the participants gathered in a grand hall. Soon enough, the organizers addressed the contestants in the junior category. They were informed that the first round would require them to demonstrate their skills in the hundred refinements technique, using blue copperite ore. Those with the highest scores would advance to the next round. As the announcement concluded, Mushi gave Tang Wulin a thumbs up, and he responded with a smile. Without wasting any time, Tang Wulin immediately began forging with his thousand refined heavy silver hammers. His goal was to complete the competition swiftly so that he could then rush to participate in the Spirit Master contest. His eyes gleamed with unwavering focus as he took the initiative to start forging before anyone else. In that moment, the unique ability of his hammers, known as the Stacked Hammers Effect, manifested. This left all the other participants in a state of shock, unable to find words to express their astonishment. While Tang Wu Lin continued forging, the blacksmith masters on the stage observed him with furrowed brows, some of them considering his actions to be somewhat reckless. Among the esteemed panel of judges presiding over the forging competition sat a distinguished figure named Duan Lao, his face adorned with a well-groomed beard. Upon laying eyes on Tang Wu Lin, he dismissed the young boy as a mere child, believing that he had neglected a crucial step in the forging process. It was widely acknowledged within the blacksmith community that one must thoroughly examine the material and gain insight before embarking on the refining of blue copyright. Duan Lao questioned whether Tang Wu Lin possessed this fundamental understanding and pondered the identity of his mentor. As Tang Wu Lin commenced his forging, he became completely engrossed in his craft, oblivious to the world around him. A radiant aura enveloped him as he gritted his teeth with unwavering determination and unwavering focus. Even Mu Shi, a participant of the competition, found herself affected by this captivating display. However, she harbored no doubt that Tang Wu Lin would swiftly complete his task. In the meantime, she assumed a cross-legged position, engaging in meditation to restore her energy while awaiting Tang Wu Lin's triumphant finish. Unfortunately, the other candidates' position near Tang Wu Lin were not as fortunate. Each blacksmith possessed their own unique rhythm, susceptible to disruption from external sources. As anticipated, Tang Wu Lin's final strike resounded, signaling the completion of his forging. The suddenness of his success left the invigilator astounded. Approaching Tang Wu Lin's forging station, she inquired if he was absolutely certain of his accomplishment. She reminded him that failure to achieve the hundred refinements would result in immediate elimination. Unfazed, Tang Wulin calmly reaffirmed his earlier statement. In that moment, Duan Lao praised the extraordinary sounds emanating from Tang Wulin's hammer and requested to examine the young boy's meticulously refined blue copyright. He recognized that the boy had the potential to be a genius if he didn't constantly talk nonsense. After a quick examination of the final product, the man was astonished and realized that the piece had achieved an exceptional level of refinement. Without wasting any time, he instructed someone to find out which association the boy belonged to. However, by the time the man made this request, Tang Wu Lin had already left. He was already on his way to the Sky Sea Stadium to participate in the junior category of the Spirit Master competition. Upon arrival, he discovered that the competition was in full swing, with matches divided into several heats due to the large number of participants. Tang Wu Lin was assigned to the third heat, and his match was scheduled to begin in an hour. As he reached the check-in area, he suddenly heard a sharp snort behind him. When he turned around, he saw an irritated Ye Xinglan, who angrily declared that she had finally caught up with him and demanded an explanation for his earlier actions. She vividly remembered the humiliation she had experienced alongside Shu Liji. As students of Shrek Academy, they had tried to seek help from their teachers but ended up having to wash dishes at a restaurant for hours because they had no money. Ye Xinglan had never felt such shame in her life, and she held Tang Wulin responsible for all her misfortunes. She questioned why he hadn't paid the entire bill as promised. In response, Tang Wulin cheekily replied, that he had paid for his own meal and questioned why he should be expected to pay for hers. Furthermore, he reminded her that Shu Liji had initially offered to cover the cost of the meal. While Ye Xinglan was still taken aback by these words, Tang Wu Lin's expression turned serious as he bombarded her with questions. He inquired why he was expected to foot the bill when Ye Xinglan had shown no intention of becoming his friend. This question immediately flustered Ye Xinglan as she recalled Tang Wu Lin's earlier statement about feeling honored to dine with them. However, Tang Wu Lin swiftly countered questioning whether he was obligated to pay simply because he felt honored. Furthermore, he pointed out that he had never promised to treat both Shu Liji and Ye Xinglan to a meal. Tang Wulin didn't stop there. 
He looked at Ye Xinglan with disdain, and firmly stated that he would have had no issue covering the entire bill if they were truly friends. He emphasized that Ye Xinglan had never intended to befriend him in the first place. As he spoke, Ye Xinglan trembled with frustration, realizing she had been thoroughly defeated in this logical argument. Unwilling to concede, Ye Xinglan had a desperate outburst, tears welling up in her eyes, as she argued that Tang Wulin had consumed the largest portion. Nonchalantly, Tang Wulin turned away and asked if anyone had prevented her from eating more. Ye Xinglan attempted to stop him from leaving, but Tang Wulin had already departed, leaving her in a state of extreme agitation. She was infuriated by her inability to win the argument. Beside her, Xu Liji stood timidly, commenting that Tang Wulin's argument made a lot of sense. Despite his feeble attempt to pacify his companion, Ye Xinglan was already fired up. She expressed her determination to compete in the tournament solely to teach Tang Wulin a lesson in the arena. Before long, the time arrived for Tang Wulin's inaugural match. The commentator's voice boomed through the arena, announcing that both fighters had a mere 30 seconds to prepare. It was then that Tang Wulin's keen eyes caught sight of his opponent's two spirit rings. A slight frown creased his brow as he pondered how far he would progress in the tournament. Despite the uncertainty, he resolved to give it his all. As soon as the signal was given, Tang Wulin sprang into action, launching a swift and aggressive attack. His opponent, caught off guard by this sudden maneuver, felt an overwhelming aura of dominance loom over him. His eyes widened in terror as the match abruptly came to an end. Tang Wulin stood tall above his defeated adversary, who slumped to the arena floor. In a desperate attempt to continue fighting, the defeated fighter argued with the referee about his formidable spirit skills. However, the referee advised him to gain real combat experience before returning to the arena. Returning to the hotel, Tang Wulin reunited with Gu Yue and Xi Si. Inquiring about their own matches, Xi Si cheerfully reported their victories without any complications. The news brought a radiant smile to Tang Wulin's face. He acknowledged the wisdom of their teacher, Wu Zheng Kong, who had emphasized the importance of combat experience. Tang Wulin also observed that many contestants failed due to their lack of practical combat knowledge. Gu Yue chimed in, emphasizing that true strength encompassed a multitude of factors, with spirit power and skills being just a fraction of the equation. In that moment, their discussion was abruptly interrupted by Director Long, who hurriedly approached them and extended his congratulations to the young ones for their triumph. Tang Wulin was pleasantly surprised to see the man, who was fervently enthusiastic about the afternoon team competition, which would serve as a true test for Class Zero. Director Long announced that the better their performance, the more resources Class Zero would receive from the esteemed EC Academy. It was at this point that Tang Wulin realized the immense pressure their teacher, known as the Cold God, must be under due to the Academy's arrangements for Class Zero. With a resolute expression, he understood that the greatest reward they could offer their teacher was emerging victorious in the tournament. Filled with determination, he rallied his teammates by declaring their unwavering commitment to triumph, regardless of the opponents they would face. Later that day, the contestants were graciously invited into the arena. As Class Zero joined the ranks of other competitors, Tang Wulin remained focused on their objective for the match which was the successful execution of their tactics. Among them, Gu Yue stood as the strongest member. Therefore, they devised a plan to keep her as their hidden ace, with Xu Xiaoyan taking her place in the first match. Class Zero's initial opponents hailed from the Ocean Academy, each of them 14 years of age. The opposing team's captain condescendingly referred to Class Zero as mere brats and inquired if they were from the East Sea Academy. CC was instantly provoked by this remark. However, Tang Wulin discreetly signaled for him to stand down and requested that he be entrusted with handling the opponents himself. Tang Wulin confidently stepped forward, closing the distance between himself and the rival captain. Despite his shorter stature, he exuded an air of self-assurance as he confirmed that they were indeed from East Sea Academy, and furthermore, they were first-year students. With a nod, he politely requested their opponents to enlighten them as seniors. Tang Wulin then turned on his heel and made his way back to his team, while their adversaries reveled in their fortune of facing younger opponents. Moments later, the signal was given, marking the beginning of the match. Without hesitation, Tang Wulin charged towards their opponents, his teammate CC skillfully concealing himself behind him. The opposing team couldn't help but wonder why these youngsters were rushing at them without even releasing their spirit rings. Just as Tang Wulin closed in on the enemy, the fighters from Ocean Academy unleashed their spirit rings. However, they were caught off guard as the boy swiftly unleashed his blue-silver grass, ensnaring them in its grasp. Desperate, they screamed at each other, urging their comrades to sever the vines. Meanwhile, Tang Wulin maintained his hold on the opponents, while Xi Si seized the opportunity to flank them, delivering precise and powerful strikes to the back of their heads, leaving them disoriented and bewildered. In a surprising turn of events, the referee abruptly announced the end of the match. The defeated fighters, now regaining their senses, were left in a state of utter confusion and disbelief. They were rendered helpless, unable to counter or react, as their opponent's speed proved to be insurmountable. As Tang Wulin and his team gracefully exited the stage, a slight smile played on his lips. He couldn't help but acknowledge the significant impact their real combat experience had made, all thanks to the rigorous training provided by their teacher. Once they stepped off the stage, 
Xu Xiaoyan couldn't contain her amusement and flashed a sweet smile at Tang Wulin, expressing her surprise at his cunning nature. In response, Tang Wulin simply smiled back and explained that it was only logical to utilize any means necessary to conserve their strength. After all, their ultimate goal was to emerge as the champions. However, before he could delve further into his reasoning, a shrill voice abruptly interrupted him, questioning his lack of concern for potential eavesdroppers. Tang Wulin swiftly identified the source of the voice and was met with a scowl from Ye Xinglan. Ye Xinglan declared that she had also enlisted for the team battles and eagerly anticipated witnessing Tang Wulin's prowess in an actual fight. CSC was taken aback by this revelation, pondering whether Shrek students were permitted to participate in the tournament. In response, Ye Xinglan clarified that they would temporarily join forces with another academy's lineup. She then directed a menacing warning towards Class Zero, cautioning them to pray for elimination before crossing paths with her in the upcoming rounds. In that moment, Gu Yue stepped forward, asserting that if fate dictated their confrontation, so be it. She confidently declared that they would see who would have the last laugh. With determination in her eyes, she addressed Tang Wulin as captain and requested they depart from the stadium. As they made their way back to the hotel, Tang Wulin recounted the encounter with Ye Xinglan to his teammates. Xu Xiaoyan commended him for standing his ground and refusing to be intimidated by a student from the prestigious Shrek Academy. Xi Xi made a comment about Tang Wulin's aversion to spending money, to which Tang Wulin did not object. Gu Yue calmly agreed, seemingly believing that Tang Wulin could do no wrong. Naturally, Zisi protested against her biased opinion. In response, Gu Yue gave him a threatening look and asked if he had a problem. Frustrated, Zisi suddenly burst out, asking if Gu Yue wanted to marry Tang Wulin when she grew up. The unexpected question caught Gu Yue off guard, and her expression immediately darkened. She almost said something, but then quickly turned around and left. The boys watched her retreating figure with concern, as it was unlike her usual self to pass up the chance to engage in a bout of bickering with ZC. Later, Tang Wulin scolded ZC for speaking nonsense and questioned what the boy knew about marriage at his age. However, ZC was still preoccupied with Gu Yue's strange behavior and wondered if something was wrong with her. That evening, there was a sudden knock on the door to Tang Wulin's hotel room. Mu Shi had come to see him, appearing agitated about something. She pinched Tang Wulin's cheek and disapprovingly mentioned that he was once again in the spotlight. Confused, Tang Wulin wondered what he had done. Mu Xi then revealed that Tang Wulin had broken a record for the fastest high-grade hundred refinements in the history of the Sky Sea Alliance tournament. Tang Wulin was filled with disbelief as he stared intently. He quickly explained that he had rushed through the job solely to participate in the Spirit Masters team competitions. In response, Mu Xi recounted what had transpired after Tang Wulin had left the competition hall. The tournament officials had immediately sprung into action, desperately searching for him. At the time, Mu Xi had refrained from revealing anything about Tang Wulin. After Mushi finished recounting the commotion caused by Tang Wulin at the blacksmith's competition, she reminded him that he was already in the spotlight. She had come to remind him that many people would be focusing on him in the next round. The following day, Tang Wulin and Mushi arrived at the blacksmith's competition venue. Tang Wulin wore a serious expression as he asked Mushi if she believed in him. His words struck Mushi as peculiar, and she inquired about his intentions. With unwavering seriousness, Tang Wulin requested that she choose heavy silver medal in the next round if she truly believed in him. A while later, both Tang Wulin and Mu Shi settled down for the second stage of the blacksmith's competition. As they prepared to begin, they each grasped their forging hammers. Mu Shi found herself pondering over Tang Wulin's words, questioning whether it was truly acceptable for her to choose heavy silver metal. Lost in thought, she gazed at the array of different metal ores before her. The earlier conversation echoed in her mind where Tang Wulin had promised to make her the champion. Despite her initial skepticism, Tang Wulin proceeded to explain his reasoning. He emphasized that since he had already broken a record, he preferred not to draw any further attention to himself. Tang Wulin reminded Mu Shi of her promise to reward him with the prize money if she were to secure first place. He reasoned that if she became the champion, and he settled for the runner-up position, he could potentially obtain both rewards. After presenting his plan, Tang Wulin sought Mu Shi's opinion, believing it to be a win-win scenario. However, Mu Shi turned away, expressing her disbelief due to their rivalry. Internally, she pondered why Tang Wulin was so willing to relinquish the championship to her despite knowing his sincerity. Nevertheless, Mu Shi had reservations about accepting what the boy had rightfully earned. She was determined to decline his offer and hoped that Tang Wulin would continue to achieve even greater heights. Returning to the present, when the announcement was made for participants to select their respective metal ores, Mu Shi hesitated until Tang Wulin handed her the heavy silver metal ore. This unexpected gesture surprised Mu Shi, immediately triggering her apprehension. Despite this, Tang Wulin remained resolute and requested her trust reminding her of their junior-senior relationship. Mu Shi remained hesitant, but Tang Wulin interrupted her thoughts with a gentle embrace. In that moment he felt compelled to hold her, and as soon as he did, Mu Shi's unease dissipated, 
Ultimately, both of them chose the heavy silver metal before proceeding to their respective forging stations. Unbeknownst to them, Zheng Tian had witnessed their embrace and seethed with anger. He was infuriated by Tang Wulin's audacity to hug Mu Shi. Furthermore, Mu Shi didn't put up any resistance. In that moment, he started questioning the nature of their relationship. Once they settled at their forging stations, Tang Wulin asked Mu Shi to follow his forging rhythm when the competition started, so they could forge together. He assured her that as long as she followed his lead, there wouldn't be any issues. Although Mu Shi didn't quite grasp what Tang Wulin was talking about, she agreed without hesitation. As soon as the signal was given to begin, Tang Wulin and Mu Shi focused on adjusting their breathing and synchronizing it to prepare for the forging. Mu Shi couldn't help but be slightly distracted by the fact that Tang Wulin had already entered a deep mental state for forging. She realized that he truly deserved the praise of her renowned father, as he was undoubtedly extraordinary. Tang Wulin gave Mu Shi one last reassuring nod, and they both nodded in agreement. Even though Mu Shi didn't fully comprehend Tang Wulin's intentions, she still chose to trust him and was excited to see what surprise he had in store for her. A moment later, they both raised their hammers simultaneously and struck their heavy silver medals. Their hammers fell in perfect sync, creating brilliant sparks that scattered around them. Mu Shi mirrored Tang Wulin's actions, and gradually, the tempo and strength of their hammers became increasingly similar. Before long, Mu Shi noticed something remarkable. They were in perfect rhythm. Although she wasn't as naturally gifted as Tang Wulin, she could still be considered a forging genius because soon enough, she was completely immersed in the forging zone alongside him. The feeling was incredible, like nothing she had ever experienced before. Despite the sweat dripping down her face, she couldn't help but smile. The forging process was going really well. The other contestants nearby were curious about what was happening with Tang Wulin and Mu Shi. They couldn't help but notice that their forging rhythm was exactly the same. After a while, both of them delivered their final hammer strikes. In that moment, two beams of light shot up from their forging stations at the same time. The bearded judge, Duan Lao, couldn't believe his eyes. He immediately jumped up from his table to get a better look. But then, Sen Yue stepped in and blocked the judge's path. He firmly told him that the two were in a state of comprehending blacksmithing. Sen Yue asked Duan Lao not to disturb them for the moment. The judge understood the importance of comprehension to a blacksmith and agreed to leave them alone. However, he couldn't help but look at Tang Wulin and Mu Shi in confusion. The phenomenon with the beams of light meant that they were almost achieving half-spirit refinement. Tang Wulin stood with his eyes closed, while Mu Shi leaned over her forging station. Both of them had a strange aura around them as they took the time to meditate and understand the experience. In that moment, Duan Lao's gaze shifted towards the finished product, only to realize that both pieces were of second-grade quality. These heavy silver metals had undergone a thousand refinements, reaching the second grade. The bearded judge was taken aback by this revelation, as he knew that achieving such a result required the skills of blacksmiths ranked four and above. Observing the ongoing enlightenment of the duo, Duan Lao could discern that they had both attained the level of rank three blacksmiths. He then turned his attention to Sen Yue and commended him for nurturing such talented successors, particularly the young prodigy who appeared to be no older than ten. In response, Sen Yue respectfully acknowledged the judge and explained that Mu Shi possessed innate talent while the boy named Tang Wulin was the personal disciple of Mu Chen, the president of East Sea City's Blacksmiths Association. Duan Lao was surprised to learn that Mu Chen had taken in such a disciple, and he turned to his colleague to inquire if he had heard the same. With a stern expression, Tian Yue questioned Duan Lao's intentions behind his line of questioning. However, the old man averted his gaze and claimed that his words held no particular meaning. As Sen Yue observed Duan Lao's silhouette, he understood that the judge had set his sights on Tang Wulin. After a short while, Tang Wulin opened his eyes, having absorbed the knowledge gained from the forging experience. He was determined to gain further expertise in forging before advancing his cultivation to rank 30, at which point he would acquire his third spirit ring. He recognized that by doing so, his success rate in forging could be significantly enhanced. Additionally, he could also save some money when the time came. It didn't take long before Mu Xi also opened her eyes and glanced at her final creation. To her surprise, she had reached the level of thousand refinements and had even achieved the second grade. Through the earlier process of enlightenment, she had finally gained a profound understanding of the true essence of the Thousand Refinement Technique. With a sigh, she acknowledged that from that moment onward, she had officially entered the ranks of Level 3 blacksmiths. And all of this was thanks to Tang Wulin, whose guidance had surpassed what her own father could offer. Subsequently, she signaled to Tang Wulin that it was time to depart, and by then, the entire hall had emptied, leaving only the two of them as the sole participants remaining. As they strolled away from the venue, Mu Shi inquired whether Tang Wulin intended to participate in the individual matches of the Spirit Master competition. Tang Wulin responded affirmatively and questioned why Mu Shi had not done the same, considering her strength. In response, 
She explained that she had taken the time to carefully contemplate her options and had decided to solely pursue her passion for blacksmithing. Therefore, she would focus solely on forging. Tang Wulin commended Mu Shi for her unwavering dedication to her craft. He then explained that his situation was different because his spirit essence was originally weak. It had taken him a lot of hard work to increase his spirit power, and he had barely managed to keep up with his peers in Class Zero. Moreover, he required greater spirit power to become a powerful blacksmith. Therefore, he had to work diligently at forging, so that one day he could become a master of battle armor. After their brief conversation, Tang Wulin bid farewell to Mu Shi and swiftly made his way towards the individual matches at the arena. Mu Shi watched his fading silhouette and remembered her father's advice about cultivating a good relationship with Tang Wulin due to his exceptional talent. Sometime later, Tang Wulin arrived at the stadium and met up with Zisi. He inquired about the strength of the contestants on that day. CC confirmed that the contestants were particularly formidable, with all of them possessing three spirit rings, and they were stronger than the previous day. Tang Wulin remained undeterred and encouraged CC to sign up with him. He saw it as an opportunity to sharpen their skills, understanding that losing to a stronger opponent held no significance. Just then, Ye Xinglan appeared on the arena and approached Tang Wulin, asking if he was waiting for his match. Before Tang Wulin could respond, she informed him that his next opponent was unable to participate. Therefore, she would be his new opponent. Shi Shi was taken aback by the news, but Tang Wulin maintained a composed expression. With determination, he replied that it was all right. Ye Xinglan made an attempt to intimidate Tang Wulin, but his expression remained unchanged, much to her frustration. She couldn't understand why he wasn't scared of her, especially considering her affiliation with Shrek Academy. After Ye Xinglan left, Zia Xie and Gu Yue looked at their captain with concern. However, Tang Wulin reassured them, explaining that this was actually a great opportunity for him to challenge a stronger opponent and gain more combat experience. In truth, Tang Wulin was delighted to be in this situation, a sentiment shared by Wu Zhang Kong. The stoic teacher approached the trio and placed a hand on Tang Wulin's shoulder, encouraging him to give his best and utilize his current abilities to their fullest extent. Wu Zhang Kong exuded confidence in Tang Wulin's victory. Tang Wulin agreed wholeheartedly with his teacher, and just as they were about to take the stage, an announcement was made for the contestants to gather. Ye Xinglan glared down at her opponent, determined to teach him a lesson for all the grievances he had caused earlier. Once the signal was given for the match to begin, Tang Wu Lin sprang into action with remarkable agility. His purple thousand-year spirit ring and golden dragon claw were unleashed as he charged towards Ye Xinglan. In that moment, Ye Xinglan took immediate notice of his exceptional abilities, recognizing his extraordinary physical and mental strength. It was clear to her that only someone with such immense power could bear the weight of a thousand-year spirit ring. Having acknowledged Tang Wulin's exceptional talent, Ye Xinglan unleashed her own spirit essence, the Star God Sword, while revealing her cultivation of two hundred-year spirit rings. The spectators in the crowd were taken aback by her unique spirit essence and marveled at how a young child could achieve such a high level of sword unity. Xie Xie, another observer, noted that although Ye Xinglan possessed two hundred-year spirit rings, her cultivation base felt distinctly different from others at the same level. As Tang Wulin and Ye Xinglan prepared to clash, Ye Xinglan executed a skillful feint with her sword, aiming swiftly for Tang Wulin's shoulder. However, to her surprise, Tang Wulin reacted with lightning speed and deflected the blow. He locked eyes with his opponent, recognizing her previous attack as a close call. Ye Xinglan, on the other hand, regarded Tang Wulin as a formidable opponent. As Tang Wulin skidded across the arena floor, he swiftly regained his balance. Simultaneously, he sensed a potent force emanating from Ye Xinglan's sword, attempting to infiltrate his body. In that critical moment, he had no choice but to utilize his bloodline power to counter the sword energy. Ye Xinglan, astutely observing the change in her opponent, realized that he had successfully blocked the power of her star god's sword. She also recognized the immense threat posed by Tang Wulin's golden dragon claw. Meanwhile, Tang Wulin initiated his next attack, unleashing the vines of his blue silver grass. He reminded himself to remain cautious of the sword's power. Concurrently, Ye Xinglan noticed that Tang Wulin's spirit essence was unrelated to his dragon claw. This led her to ponder whether the boy possessed a twin spirit essence. In response to Tang Wulin's assault, Ye Xinglan raised her sword, causing beams of resplendent starlight to descend upon the arena. She regarded Tang Wulin's spirit skill as insignificant in her eyes. Tang Wulin, suddenly perplexed, questioned his opponent's spirit skill, which had caused him to lose control of his spirit essence. In that moment, he unleashed the purple demon eye, attempting a mental attack. However, he quickly realized that the starlight hindered his vision, leaving him uncertain if it could truly defend against mental attacks. Suddenly, Ye Xinglan shattered the barrier of blue silver grass and launched a different skill, creating multiple clones that surrounded Tang Wulin, aiming to strike him. Cici shouted a word of caution to the captain, who was still bewildered by his opponent's skill, making it impossible for him to track her movements. Additionally, her spirit essence was suppressing him. In that moment, Tang Wulin realized he had no choice but to unleash his trump card, 
He activated his mental power perception and unleashed the full power of his golden dragon claw. With his eyes closed, he skillfully deflected each incoming attack with his dragon claw. To Ye Xinglan's surprise, Tang Wu Lin closed the distance and nearly landed an attack with his dragon claw. However, Ye Xinglan swiftly dodged the attack, inwardly acknowledging his effort. It was clear to her that she had to take the fight seriously and urge Tang Wu Lin to block her next move. In that moment, Ye Xinglan's Star God Sword burst into thousands of Starlight Swords, enveloping Tang Wu Lin instantly. Despite having his eyes shut, Tang Wu Lin relied solely on his mental power perception. He realized he was in a precarious situation as his blue silver grass was unable to deflect the incoming attack. Suddenly, Tang Wu Lin opened his eyes, radiating determination. He was prepared to give it his all and hold nothing back. Therefore, Tang Wu Lin abruptly charged towards the Starlight Swords, with his sights set on Ye Xinglan. He braced himself for the imminent impact, enduring severe injuries, yet managing to maintain a defensive stance. Ye Xinglan was taken aback by his audacity, but she knew that her adversary was almost defeated. In that very moment, she thrust her sword forward, intending to deliver the final blow. However, Tang Wu Lin's unwavering determination finally paid off. Despite his injuries, he clenched his teeth and extended his golden dragon claw. This time, he successfully seized hold of his opponent's sword, much to the latter's astonishment. Judging by Tang Wu Lin's momentum, it was clear that he intended to strike a blow to his opponent. However, at that very moment, Ye Xinglan panicked and lost control of the Star God sword energy that had hit Tang Wu Lin, causing it to unexpectedly explode. As a result, Tang Wu Lin's golden dragon claw vanished instantly and he was forcefully thrown through the air. Out of concern for their captain, Zisi shouted while Gu Yue froze, her face filled with dread. Suddenly, Wu Jung Kong appeared in the arena and swiftly carried Tang Wu Lin in his arms. Xi Xi anxiously inquired about their captain's well-being, and the composed Wu Jung Kong assured him that Tang Wu Lin's life was not in danger. He then expressed his intention to take the boy away for immediate treatment. Meanwhile, Ye Xinglan had collapsed on the arena floor, her voice trembling as she asked about Tang Wu Lin's condition. Unbeknownst to her, her actions had ignited a deep anger within Gu Yue. 